हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू माई सेल पंकज चावला लेक्चर केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग एट पंडित जिया गवर्नमेंट पॉलिटेक्निक कॉलेज होशियारपुर वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू इन थर्ड सेमेस्टर कोर्स ऑन यूनिट ऑपरेशन ऑफ डिप्लोमा इन प्लास्टिक टेक्नोलॉजी अंडर पंजाब स्टेट बोर्ड ऑफ टेक्निकल एजुकेशन एंड इंडस्ट्रियल ट्रेनिंग चंडीगढ़ हेयर इज ए डिस्कलेमर अनाउंसमेंट द मटीरियल प्रेजेंटेड हेयर बाय थ्रू सीरीज ऑफ वीडियो लेक्चर्स ऑन यूनिट ऑपरेशन डज नॉट क्लेम एनी औरिजिनैलिटी एंड कैनॉट बी यूज एज ए सब्सिट्यूट फॉर प्रेस्क्राइब टेक्स्ट बुक्स द मैटर प्रेजेंटेड हेयर इज प्रिपेयर बाय द ऑथर फॉर कंप्लीटिंग हिज टीचिंग असाइनमेंट्स रिलेटेड टू द सिलेबस प्रिस्क्राइब बाय पंजाब स्टेट बोर्ड ऑफ टेक्निकल एजुकेशन एंड इंडस्ट्रियल ट्रेनिंग चंडीगढ़ फॉर द थर्ड सेमेस्टर सब्जेक्ट ऑन यूनिट ऑपरेशन ऑफ थ्री ईयर डिप्लोमा इन प्लास्टिक टेक्नोलॉजी बाय रेफरिंग द टेक्स्ट बुक्स रेफरेंस बुक्स ई बुक्स एंड मटीरियल अवेलेबल ऑन इंटरनेट फर्दर द ई कॉन्टेंट प्रजेंटेड थ्रू सीरीज ऑफ वीडियो लेक्चर्स इज नॉट इंटेंडेड टू बी यूज for commercial purpose and the author is not accountable for any issues legal or otherwise arising out of use of this e content today we will start with the first chapter that is on unit operations and unit processes so today we will cover the following broad topics that is definitions and fundamental concepts then types of changes in matter physical change chemical change and then what is the difference between the physical change and chemical change so first of all we will discuss some of the definitions and the fundamental concepts under this section we will cover different approaches to study behavior of matter system surroundings then universe what is system boundary types of systems then what is property then what is state equilibrium state phase path process types of processes steady state process unsteady state processes so these are the basic terms that you need to understand <coughs> before we proceed further <coughs> so first of all we will discuss what are the different approaches which are uh, followed to study the behavior of matter engineers and the chemists are interested in systems containing matter which has mass and occupies physical space so behavior of the matter can be studied by following two approaches the first one is the microscopic approach and second one is is the macroscopic approach so in microscopic approach the effect of the molecular motion is considered we consider the matter in the form of molecules so for example at microscopic level the pressure of a gas is not constant moreover the temperature of a gas is a function of velocity of molecules so we are interested in what is happening at the molecular level on the other hand the most of the microscopic properties cannot be measured with common instruments nor can be perceived by human senses so in the second approach we consider the matter in bulk so in mic microscopic approach certain quantity of matter is considered without a concern on the events occurring at the molecular level so these effects can be perceived by human senses or measured by the instruments so that's why this macroscopic approach is widely followed in the various engineering analysis or in the thermodynamics so first of all what is system a thermodynamic system is any three dimensional region of physical space on which we wish to focus our attention for example a chemical reactor glass full of water gas pipeline then spoon containing salt these are the some of the examples of the system then surroundings everything external to the system is surroundings so system is distinguished from the surroundings by a specified boundary which may be at rest or in motion 
So interactions between the system and the surroundings uh, play an important role in thermodynamics. So what is the universe? So if we group this system and surroundings, so if the group system and the surroundings are taken together, it is called a universe. Then system boundary. A system boundary is a conceptual line that divides the system <coughs> that you want to study from everything else. So, so how you can, so th this is a demarcation between a system and a surroundings. So boundaries may be real or imaginary. Real in case of a rigid tank, the boundaries are very much real or it may be imaginary. So likewise we have considered a system in which there is a salt placed in the spoon. So in that case the system boundary is imaginary. So no real boundary is there. Then second is system may be at rest or in motion. So again the example of a rigid tank, the boundaries are in a chemical reactor the boundaries are at rest while in case of uh, piston cylinder device so it is in motion so the piston is moving inward or outward in that way the boundary is also moving inward and outward so next is types of system so there is two types of exchange that can occur between the system and its surroundings the first one is the energy exchange which mostly takes place in the form of heat and work the second is exchange of matter, the movement of molecules across the boundary of a system and the surroundings. So based upon the types of exchange, we can classify the system into three groups. One is the open system, which exchanges mass or matter and energy, both. So in closed system, there is no exchange of matter is there, but there is exchange of energy in the form of heat and work between the system and the surroundings. Second is the isolated system. So this is an, in, in this case, there is no exchange of matter and energy. So the example of open system, suppose you are having a cup of tea and just kept that cup of tea on the table. So this is a sort of open system. It exchanges both mass and energy. Mass means some of the water vapors are leaving the cup of the tea as well as the energy. It is losing the temperature also. So if you close the same cup of tea with a lid, then it, it turns to a closed system. Now in that case, no water vapor is allowed to escape while it exchanges energy from the system. In the third case, isolated system, if you, you place the tea in a, some insulated flasks, so in that case, there is no exchange of matter as well as energy. Next is the property. So to describe a system and to predict its behavior, it requires the knowledge of its properties. How those properties are related. So these are important. The properties are macroscopic characteristics of a system such as mass, volume, energy and pressure. The value of a property of a system is independent of the process or the path followed by the system in reaching the particular state. The change in value of the property depends upon the initial and the final states. It, it is independent of the path followed. The properties enable us to identify the system. What is the characteristic of the system at a particular point of time? It is indicated by the value of the properties. Next is extensive property. So the property which depend on the size of the system is called extensive property. For example, volume, mass. So these are the extensive properties. Next is intensive property. The property which is independent of the size of the system is called in intensive property. For example, pressure and temperature. These two are the intensive properties. So the ratio of the extensive property to the mass is called the specific value of the property. For example, specific volume, specific internal energy, molar property, the ratio of the value of the property to the number of moles of the substance contained in the system is called molar property. For example, molar volume, molar internal energy. Next is the state. 
so it is the condition of a system as defined by the values of all its properties so it gives the complete description of the system and any operation in which one or the more the properties of the system change is called the change of state so this is a very important concept the state is described by the set of properties so if any one of the property changes then we can say there is a change in state next is the equilibrium state so a system is said to be in equilibrium if there is no tendency towards any spontaneous change so equilibrium generally requires all properties to be uniform and throughout the system so there are mechanical thermal phase or chemical equilibria is there so accordingly we classify the types of equilibrium if there is no difference in pressure right across the different regions within the system we will say there is a mechanical equilibrium similarly if there is no difference in potential at different points then we can say there is a at different any two points within the system then we can say there is electrical equilibrium and similarly if there is no difference in concentration of species at two different points within the system we can say there is a species equilibrium similarly if there is no difference in temperature at two different points within the system then we can say there is a thermal equilibrium so thermal thermodynamic equilibrium employs all of the above four so if there is a <coughs> equilibrium of all the four that is the pressure potential concentration and temperature we can say there is a thermodynamic equilibrium next is the phase so it is the quantity of the mass that that is homogeneous throughout the throughout in the chemical composition and physical structure for example the solid liquid vapor and gas a system consisting of uh, more than two phases is known as heterogeneous right next is path the succession of states pass through the pass through during a change of state is called a path of the system next is the process a system is said to go through a process if it goes through a change of state so whenever there is a change of state if there is a change in any of the property we can we can say there is a change of state and the process is going to happen or process is going to occur so during a process a system undergoes a series of changes in state so this is very important it's not just a single change is there the multiple changes are there or in steps right next is system may undergo changes in some or all of its properties this is again a very important sometimes there is a change in only one property during du du during the change of state then even then we can say there is some process has occurred so if there is a change in more than one property then again we can say the process has occurred a process can be construed to be the locus of changes of state so there are again as i have said earlier that so there is multiple changes in state is there right so through which uh, the system has passed that 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 describes the path then types of processes as a matter of rule we all know that the we can keep one property constant during a process while other are allowed to change so accordingly we can define the different types of processes depending upon the property we have kept constant during the change uh, suppose in the isothermal process if the tam the temperature is kept constant so on the other hand if the pressure is kept constant during the process then it is known as isobaric process if 
the volume is kept constant then it is known as isochoric if the entropy is kept constant then it is known as isentropic process if the enthalpy is kept constant then it is known as isenthalpic process if the concentration is kept constant during the process then it is known as isosteric process then last but not the least is the adiabat adiabatic process during which there is no addition or no removal of heat is there right so these processes are very fast right they, they these processes do not allow any type of heat change to occur during the process next is steady state process so a process is said to be under the steady state when the properties or conditions at all points in the system or equipment or apparatus remain constant as time changes right this is very important there is no change in property at all points right so no accumulation of mass and energy over the time period of interest is there in whenever the uh, whenever there is a steady state process so the thermodynamic properties may vary from point to point but at a given point it remain unchanged that is very important so at at different points you may expect the different values of the properties but at a particular point it it will remain constant then next is unsteady state process a process is says to be under the unsteady state when the properties or the conditions at some or all the points in the system equipment or apparatus changes with time so in in case of unsteady state process so variation in mass or energy over the time period of interest is there next the thermodynamic properties may vary from time to time at some or all the points so this is very important so this steady state process and unsteady state process is very important uh, we uh, when we study the different types of unit operations so this, these two types of processes are also important when we study the material and energy balance so these are the some of the basic definitions on the fund these are the some of the basic definitions on the fundamental concepts that that you should know for better understanding of this chapter next is the types of changes in matter so matter uh, uh, as you all know that anything that takes up space and has mass is known as matter and it is present everywhere it is constantly experiencing changes so two types of changes in matter uh, is there that is the physical change and the chemical change now what is physical change a change in physical properties of the matter is called physical change physical changes do not alter the identity of the chemical constitution identity or the chemical constitution of the substance this point is very important so what do you understand by the chemical identity chemical identity means the what are the different types of chemicals are present in a given substance right so you may sometimes it may happen there uh, a and b reacts to form c and d means the identity of a and b is lost and new identity appears c and d or sometimes happen that uh, the reaction does not go into the completion and you may expect a and b also present along with c and d so in this case there is change in the chemical identity so there are two things chemical constitution and the chemical composition so in chemical constitution we mean that what are the different chemicals the number of chemicals or number of elements that are present in a substance while in case of chemical composition we we are more interested about what is the percentage what is the reality ratios of the these compounds or the elements which are present in the substance so in the physical change there is no change in identity or the chemical constitution of the substance this is very important so when you cut anything dissolve anything melting and boiling do not produce any new substance with new properties so so all these represent the 
physical changes. So physical property is the characteristic of the material that one can observe easily without changing the substances that make up the material. So every substance has physical properties that distinguish it from the other substances. So some of the examples of the physical properties that is the shape, size, color, order, temperature, volume, density, melting point, boiling point, volatility, viscosity, state of aggregation. So these are the some of the physical properties. So whenever there is change in physical property, we can, you can say that there is a change in, there, there is a physical change. So for example, if you take a piece of paper and tear it into two pieces, so what will happen? It becomes smaller, but it remains paper. Next, when you apply a dye or some color to the paper, right, it attains another color, but it is still a paper. You have only brought about the physical changes in it. So in, in the first case you have reduced the size, in the second case you have applied some another color. So some important physical changes of water so that you come frequently uh, when we study the unit operations. First is, first is the freezing. Freezing is the change of state from liquid to solid. So this requires the cooling of the substance or in, in this particular case water melting it it involves the change of state from solid to liquid so it is again as it requires the heating it is speeded up by heating then condensation so it involves the change of state from gas to liquid this change also requires the reduction in temperature or the cooling next is the vaporization it involves the change of state from liquid to gas so it also requires the addition of heat and it, it is speeded up by the heating Next is sublimation. It, it involves the change of state from directly from solid to gas without passing through the intervening liquid state. That is important. That is the difference. Generally, the step by step change is there. The solid first changes to liquid, then liquid then changes to gas. So in this case, the solid directly changes to gas. So for example, dry gas, dry ice, right? So in which there is a change of state from solid to gas. So this is about the physical change. Now we will study what is chemical change. So chemical change is the change in which the matter becomes new or different in terms of chemical constitution. Right? To identify a chemical change, look for the signs such as color change, bubbling or fizzing, light production, smoke formation, absorption or evolution of heat. So these are some of the changes which, which are frequently encountered whenever there is a chemical change. So whenever you want to observe or you want to distinguish, apart from looking at there is a change in chemical constitution side by side you should also look for the these changes whether there is a change in color then so mind it there is a distinction between the color change for a physical change the, for the color change for a physical change that is externally applied so this color change this color change is involved with the formation of some new substance you have not applied it externally the color changes by its own without the application of dye, right? So that, that that has to be kept in mind. Next is some of the examples in which the substances change their identities. For example, the fireworks explode, matchstick burn, cooking of food, resting of iron, right? So in, in, in all above processes, explosion, burning, cooking, resting are the chemical changes because the different substances are produced during the process. So change of one substance in a material to a different substance 
represents a chemical change means there is change in chemical identity and chemical constitution so mind it i am stressing on chemical constitution means the chemical identity chemical whenever there is change in chemical identity there is a chemical change for example burned bread toast so whenever there is a burning of bread toast is there what is there the smell is different from the smell of the original bread so in this case the order is it is a clue that a new substance is produced right a baked cake no longer resembles its ingredients of flour eggs butter sugar etc these are the ingredients which are used for making a cake but during the formation during the baking process all these substances react together to produce a completely new substance new organic compound or a organic compound in a new form because of some chemical change so chemical reaction is simply a breaking of substances reactants apart or making the new ones that is the product so during a chemical reaction there is a breaking of old bonds in formation of new bonds is there so whenever a chemical reaction takes place in new substance and the products are made right that's important so these have very different properties from the original starting material that is the reactants so we are talking about the products the products formed are having all together different properties from the reactant right so this this indicates a new substance is produced during a chemical change so this is about what is a chemical change now we will discuss the what is the difference between a physical change and a chemical change so in physical change when a substance undergoes a physical change its chemical constitution remains same despite its molecules being rearranged right so if this this includes the rearrangement this includes the change of state so change of state from solid to liquid liquid to gas or directly from solid to gas so change of state is included in the physical change that that has to be kept in mind so that is again a only the rearrangement of the molecules suppose so what what is the basic difference between the different states of matter it is only the intermolecular forces of attraction between the different molecules and the distance between the different molecules so as you move from solid to gas state through liquid state the molecular force of attraction between the molecules goes on decreasing and the distance between the molecules goes on increasing so so that is that has to be that is very important next is chemical change so whenever the substance undergoes a chemical change its chemical constitution is changed it involves the formation of new substances it second one is it affects only the physical properties like shape or size so when you whenever you cut a piece of paper or when you whenever you cut a stone it reduces size there is a reduction in the size but the stone remains stone paper remains paper so on the other hand in chemical change it changes both physical and chemical properties of the substance so whenever two compounds react together to form a new compound so what will happen the the properties of the new compound is all together different from the compound from which originally it is formed suppose there is a reaction between the sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid to uh, it leads to formation of sodium chloride salt plus water so there is a reaction between a alkali and a acid that leads to formation of salt salt is having a properties all together different between acid and a base next is this change is generally temporary and can easily be reversed in a number of cases suppose whenever you there is a change of state from solid to liquid suppose ice to water again it is reversed when when you keep that water in a fridge or 
that again changes from liquid to solid. Next, in case of chemical, the change is mostly permanent and cannot be easily reversed. In, in the number of cases, it is irreversible if it is, it, it is reversed in some mechanism that is not very much energy intensive. That is very difficult process, right? Suppose in case of acid-base neutralization reaction that we have just discussed, SCL reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride and water. So you can't produce again acid and base by reacting with sodium chloride and water, right? Next is, it is, it generally does not involve the production of energy. So no energy is produced during the physical change, rather you require some energy, right? While in chemical change, in number of processes, the energy is, production of energy is there. Likewise, you, when you burn a candle, you burn a coal, there is a production of energy. Next is, it does not involve the formation of any new substance. So that is the basic thing, new substance. The, whenever you cut a paper or a stone, paper remains paper and stone remains stone. So in case of uh, chemical change, it always involves the formation of new substances, like just we have discussed, acid-based neutralization to form salt and water. Next is, physical change involves a very little or no absorption of energy, right? So while in case of chemical change, it always involves the evolution or absorption of energy. So in case there is a evolution of energy that that chemical reaction is said to be exothermic in case of absorption of energy is there then that particular chemical reaction is said to be endothermic next is the examples of the physical change is melting of wax and boiling of water these are the examples of the physical change on the other hand the examples of the chemical change are the burning of coal and the rusting of iron. These, these two are the examples of the chemical change. So this is about the what is the difference between the physical change and the chemical change. So students, today we have discussed what is the some of the important definition and the fundamental concepts for the better understanding of this subject of unit operations on this chapter particular. Next is what are the types of changes of in matter what is physical change what is a chemical change and what is the difference between a physical change and a chemical change so now let us try some of the questions just we want to review what you have learned from this right so we will discuss some of the questions so my question number one is which of the following represent a system having boundaries which are flexible or in motion so your choices are a rigid tank a glass beaker piston cylinder device electric kettle so system boundaries if you carefully go through the, the choices so in case of rigid tank glass beaker and electric kettle so all these are having a rigid boundaries right that are not flexible why in case of piston cylinder device so the cylinder can be moved in or out uh, the sorry the piston can be moved in or out in the cylinder right so in the piston cylinder device is the answer for this question right so right answer is the piston cylinder device so the next question is which of the following is true for a closed system in terms of exchange of matter and energy with the surroundings so your choices are it exchanges both mass and energy exchanges mass but not exchanges energy exchanges no mass but exchanges energy and fourth one is the exchanges neither mass nor energy so there are four choices if you look at the four choices the, in the in the first case it exchanges both mass and energy so this is not a correct answer this happens for a open system then exchanges mass but not exchanges energy so practically there is a no 
system like this so it exchanges mass and no exchange energy the third one fourth one is it exchanges neither mass or nor energy so this is a choice for the isolated system so c is the right choice the exchanges no mass but exchanges energy so that is the correct answer for the question number 2 the it exchanges no mass but exchanges energy so next question is what is the name given to the property which depends on the size of the system so your choices are intensive property extensive property specific property molar property so out of these the intensive property does not depend upon the size while the specific it is the extensive per unit mass the molar it depends upon the it is the value of the property per unit number of moles the molar property the property of one mole of the substance so your right choice is b the extensive property for this question number 3 then the next question is the ratio of the extensive property to the mass of the system is called dash so your four choices are there intensive property colligative property specific property molar property so the right choice is of course we have just discussed also in the previous question that is specific prop property intensive does not depend upon the mass colligative depends upon the number of moles of the substance molar it is per unit mole so specific is the per unit mass the right answer is the specific property so the next question is the process during which the pressure remains constant is called the four choices are isobaric process isochoric process isentropic process isothermal process so in this case in isochoric process the volume remains same in isentropic the entropy remains same isothermal the temperature remains same. so your your right answer is the first one isobaric so in which the pressure remains same so your next question is which of the following represent a physical change so rusting of your choices are rusting of bicycle burning of coal firework exploding melting of ice so of course the right answer is the first one in the rusting of bicycle there is a chemical reaction in burning uh, of coal uh, of course there is a chemical reaction that's not a right answer of course the first one is also a not because it, it the question is which is a physical change so rusting of bicycle is a chemical change burning of coal is again a chemical change fireworks exploding is again a chemical change so while the melting of ice this is only a physical change there is a change of state is there in the melting of ice from solid to liquid so this represents a only a physical change so right answer is the melting of ice next question is which of the following represent a physical change so there are four choices the formation of atp molecule in the body frying of egg breaking of tea cup baking of cake of course the first one there is a chemical reaction formation of atp molecule in a body in second frying of egg it also leads to the chemical change so during frying or cooking there is a change in there is a chemical reaction which leads to the change in structure of the organic compounds so frying of egg is again a chemical change breaking of tea cup is a physical change because there is reduction in the size it 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 breaks into a smaller pieces so there is change in size is only there in the breaking of tea cup so it is a physical change next is baking of cake it's again a chemical change when you mix the different ingredients during a baking process there is a chemical reaction so the right answer is c baking of tea cup 
So next question is which of the following represent a chemical change? First one is the corrosion of metal, right? So this is of course a chemical change. Second is boiling of water and this is only a change of state from liquid to gas. So it is a physical change. Breaking of window glass. Again a physical change. Reduction in size. Next is condensation of water vapors. This is a change of state from liquid to solid in the condensation. So sorry so from vapors to liquid gas to liquid in the condensation so the right answer is a the corrosion of metal next is which of the following represent a chemical change first is your choices are inflation of cycle tire cutting of a stone breaking of window glass lighting a match stick so inflation of cycle tire you just increasing the volume of air inside a cycle tube it's again a physical change cutting of stone reduction in size physical change breaking of window glass again a reduction of size of the glass physical change the fourth one is lighting of matchstick this is a combustion process when you burn a matchstick right so this is a chemical change so your right answer is lightning lighting a matchstick next question is which of the following is not true for a chemical change first is generally irreversible in nature that's true chemical change is generally irreversible next is no change in chemical constitution that's that's not true wrong because that's the chemical constitution change is always there whenever whenever there is a chemical change c generally accompanied by heat changes yes evolution or absorption of heat is there whenever there is a chemical reaction leads to a leads to change in physical properties of course whenever a new compound is formed the, there is change in physical properties also so your right answer is b no change in chemical constitution so this is about your first lecture on this unit operations and unit processes you should keep you should go through this lecture again and revise at your place so next time we will start with the unit operations if you are any doubt then you can call me at at my, my number or give me a uh, reply on whatsapp then just or you can uh, post a uh, post for uh, any questions on my email id also till then thank you next time we will meet and start with the next topic that is on unit of